The weekly military casualty figures were released today in Saigon. 11 Americans were killed in combat, 20 were wounded. More than 900 North Vietnamese, South Vietnamese soldiers were killed and more than 3,200 South Vietnamese wounded. In one important aspect, the offensive has backfired badly on the North Vietnamese. It has harmed them politically inside South Vietnam. For the first time, there is a remarkable degree of political solidarity in the country. President Thieu is firmly in control. The only criticism has come from opposition leaders who felt they had to say something to protect their positions. Even they have not blamed Thieu for the communist successes. President Thieu's position is still largely dependent on the support he gets from Washington. He is the American choice to run Vietnam. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. We are certifying the 26th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. That amendment, as you know, provides for the right to vote of all of our young people between 18 and 21. 11 million new voters as a result of this amendment. A massive shock rippling out of the mountains just north of the San Fernando Valley. Hitting here, missing there, but shaking most of Southern California. Fires everywhere. I think uh, Pete's absolutely right about this medical job. This is the first time we've ever had the space to uh, really adequately test a guy up there to see how he behaves uh, under zero gravity for long periods. So we really don't know uh, what's going to happen to the guy in the long term. And this is probably, to my mind, the single most important thing that we've got to do in Total Skylab is find out whether man himself does have a a future in space in terms of making long journeys to somewhere else. Now people are beginning to pick up the pieces. What are you looking for down there? Uh, th uh all sorts of things like uh, spoons, forks, and knives, parts of mirrors, parts of plates, razor you blades. Have you found anything? Yep, money, spoons, razor blades. How razor much money did you find? Four ninety-eight. How long are you going to keep digging? Till I have to go home. I will only say that I've had some experience, and a great deal of experience, as a matter of fact, in this past year in dealing with communist leaders. I find that making a bargain with them is not easy. And you get something from them only when you have something they want to get from you. The only way we're going to get our POWs back is to be doing something to them, and that means hitting military targets in North Vietnam, the residual force in South Vietnam, and continuing the mining of the harbors of North Vietnam. Apollo 16 lifts America back into space and gives our astronauts a dune buggy tour of lunar land. Okay. I think that uh, it's interesting to consider what Margaret Mead said about women who are honored in authority in this country. She said that in fact widows are the only such women because what you have to do is be married to a man who has a certain position, live out your role of child <laughs> and housekeeping, then through no fault of yours he dies. And then, and then alone, is it all right for you to take over his job? We've decided that that's awfully hard on the men. Señor Presidente, hermoso espectáculo de niños en brazos de sus madres. Aquí están dos jóvenes madres con dos hermosas niñas que las abrazan. At this rally in Silver Spring, Maryland, 
Governor Wallace's campaign is crushed by violence. Arthur Bremer, seen applauding a 21-year-old busboy, uses the cover of the crowd and the confusion to get close enough to the candidate for an attempted assassination. Today was the critical operation for the governor to remove a bullet lodged near his spinal column and to find out whether the bullet had cut his spine. A controversial day in politics, a man arrested trying to bug the offices of the Democratic National Committee in Washington turns out to be an employee of President Richard Nixon's re-election campaign committee. And perhaps a significant day for the Vietnam peace negotiations, the president of the Soviet Union has left Hanoi saying they will resume soon. Mother Nature unleashes the fury of Hurricane Agnes across four states, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New York. 134 lives are lost. Thousands are homeless. It runs into the millions. I can assure you that I, as Secretary General of uh, this organization, I am deeply worried about this development. It is extremely serious. And it is for this reason that I decided, on my own, I want to stress this, uh, uh, to put this question of terrorism and acts of violence on the agenda of the next uh, General Assembly. Next stop, Moscow. Purpose, a summit meeting between President Nixon and Soviet leaders Brezhnev and Kosygin. Agreement is reached on limitations of nuclear weapons, the sale of American wheat to the Soviets, and the trade of beverages, our soft drinks for their vodka. Another victory for personal diplomacy on a global scale. Just in a field four miles from London Airport, the tail section was intact, but the body of the plane was demolished. With the Paris peace talks stalled, the Vietnam War worsens. Responding to a devastating Viet Cong offensive, President Nixon orders new measures. All entrances to North Vietnamese ports will be mined to prevent access to these ports and North Vietnamese naval operations from these ports. But Gordon, wasn't in Hanoi, apparently to talk about a new peace effort. He said, <laughs> and that the Soviet Union will do everything it can to bring about a de-escalation of the Vietnam War. Paris continues to be the focal point of world attention. American negotiators arrive for another in a long series of peace talks with the North Vietnamese. Presidential aide Henry Kissinger, a key figure in the lengthy and complex conferences, sounds a premature note of hope. We believe federal indictments. Washington today in the Watergate bugging affair. In spite of the increased security, West Germany continues to offer political asylum to hijackers from communist countries. Just last week, the West German government refused to return 10 Czechoslovakians who killed a pilot during their hijack escape to the West. As you know, I will soon be visiting the People's Republic of China, the Soviet Union. I go there with no illusions. We have great differences with both powers. We shall continue to have great differences. But peace depends on the ability of great powers to live together on the same planet despite their differences. We would not be true to our obligation to generations yet unborn if we failed to seize this moment to do everything in our power to ensure that we will be able to talk about those differences rather than to fight about them in the future. Peking, historic site for an unprecedented meeting between East and West. Responding to a special invitation, President and Mrs. Nixon arrive. A spy is on hand to extend an official welcome to the presidential couple. It's Mr. Nixon's initial move toward his self-proclaimed goal, a generation of peace. A 
confident president, anxious to end the diplomatic freeze between the United States and China, <laughs> Mao. Top aide Henry Kissinger joins the talks with Premier Zhou Enlai on Vietnam and East-West trade. The First Lady views giant pandas, a gift of the People's Republic. Personal presidential diplomacy tentatively parts the bamboo curtain. his condemnation of U.S. military actions in Vietnam and revealing he brought back assurances from Hanoi about the release of American prisoners of war. Including the foreign minister. Talked for well over an hour with the prime minister. Two hours and 45 minutes with the foreign minister. Both verbal and written assurances about the prisoners. Clarence Kelly, the president's choice to be permanent head of the FBI, cleared the Senate Judiciary Committee today. We'll have reports tonight on the economy, and we'll see what happened to a fat man who had part of his insides cut out in an effort to be a thin man. Massive crowds take to the streets of the Egyptian capital. Euphoria. After five lean years, there are signs that Egypt is about to stand on its own feet. They are cheering this man. It was then that President Anwar Sadat dropped his diplomatic bomb. He announced that the Russians had been asked to withdraw their Russian soil after nearly a decade of Soviet-Egyptian cooperation. Televised violence can increase aggressive tendencies in some children. We will have to manage our program. I congratulate you for that statement. Ballot of the International Olympic Committee. Out of 70 ballots, 36 were to withdraw the invitation to the Red Asian team. 31 were for maintaining it, and three were blank. This means the, the uh, invitation to the Rhode Asian team to participate in the games of the 20th century has been withdrawn. The Rhodesians left angry. Representatives of Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and Uganda were jubilant. The expulsion of Rhodesia culminated a campaign that saw American black athletes pledge to walk out with the Africans. Now their teams, they say, will unpack their suitcases, give up their threatened boycott, and the Summer Olympics can go on. Munich houses the Olympic flame as athletes from all over the globe gather for the traditional games. Officials hope that world tensions will not create an incident. said of this incident, I'm not going to comment from the White House on a third-rate burglary attempt. Obviously, he said, we don't condone, condone that kind of second-rate activity. There was little Republican reaction today to the charges that they mounted a massive intelligence and sabotage operation against the Democrats. Not moving a chess piece, he emerged world champion. Spassky had phoned the judge and conceded to the stronger position Fisher had achieved at adjournment the night before. In Paris, on Avenue Kleber, in the former Gestapo headquarters, politicians have been talking for four years about ending a war. The truth of the matter is that the Paris peace talks, hailed as a major breakthrough in 1968, 
have by 1972 achieved nothing. The delegates still turn up, make accusatory speeches and leave. And yet in other parts of Paris, secret meetings between Americans and North Vietnamese did attempt to break the deadlock. The American initiative was led by President Nixon's special advisor, Dr. Henry Kissinger. Since 1970, he has met North Vietnamese leaders 12 times. At their meetings, he offered much of what the communists demanded, the withdrawal of American forces and new elections in South Vietnam. But all offers were rejected or ignored, and the whole American formula publicly rebutted by Hanoi. Apollo 17, first nighttime launch in history. The body of former Chief Executive Harry S. Truman lies in state. Death came at 88 after a long and typically courageous struggle with illness. Former President and Mrs. Johnson and President and Mrs. Nixon attend rights. President, are you ready to take the Constitution oath? If you will place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand, and please repeat after me, I, Richard Nixon, do solemnly swear. I, Richard Nixon, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve and protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. named Alexander Butterfield drops a bombshell. The president has secretly taped all of his White House conversations, including those involving Watergate. The president had already installed a new attorney general to handle Watergate. Harvard Law Professor Archibald Cox becomes special prosecutor. Picking up the gauntlet, Cox goes before Sirica to subpoena the elusive tapes. In his client's behalf, Charles Allen Wright pleads confidentiality to deny Cox's demand. Sirica holds Cox, and is in turn upheld by the Court of Appeals. The abrupt departure of Cox and Richardson draws a fierce storm of protest. The president backs down. However, the apparent acquiescence by the White House falls short of its promise when two of the key tapes mysteriously disappear. In 18 minutes of another tape turn up blank. Press for an explanation, Presidential Secretary Rosemary Woods blames it on a variety of miscues. Nevertheless, the House Judiciary Committee, under the chairmanship of Peter Rodino, is convened to consider impeachment. While the president was involved, that he did not realize or appreciate at any time the implications of his involvement. And I think that when the facts come out... We went on the pay board in an effort to try to make the controls work, but it's now very clear that there's no real attempt to control inflation. The only real attempt is to control the wages of working people. In the House of Representatives, there is not a member left who thinks the president will not be impeached, and apparently not many who will side with him when it comes to a vote. <laughs> 